Raghav Thakur Nini Fivali James Wrigley and Olivia Stevens. We will be conducting four experiments to test wave particle duality. The first one of these experiments is called the double slit experiment. In this experiment, we will shine a laser through an opaque wall with two fine slits in it. Let's start by imagining this from the point of view that light is a particle. We would expect that the light would travel directly through the slits, and we would see two bright patches on the screen in line with the slits where light is concentrated. But wait! What we actually saw was an interference pattern. This is often called superposition of a wave, when two waves collide, the peaks and crests interfere with each other causing patterns like we see here. From this, it seems safe to assume that light is a wave. Right? In this experiment, light is shown through a quartz window as shown in the diagram. Quartz is used because of its high transparency. This is directed at a metal plate parallel to another metal plate, all enclosed in a vacuum glass tube. While we do not expect any current to flow through the circuit, an interesting behavior is observed. We connected the circuit to a galvanometer, and found that when light was shown a voltage was induced. From this we can infer that when the light hit the metal plate, outer level electrons were ejected and therefore moved to the right plate. This flow of electrons formed a current in the circuit, as charge moved around the circuit. This phenomena is called the photoelectric effect. We know that anything that is moving must have kinetic energy. To measure the kinetic energy of the electrons, we used the formula E equals charge times voltage. We knew the voltage and the charge on a single electron, and hence we would be able to find the kinetic energy of each electron. Let's imagine this experiment from the perspective that light is a wave. If we were to increase the amplitude of the given wave, then the maximum kinetic energy would increase along with brightness. If we were to imagine this from the perspective that light is a particle, then as the brightness is increased the density of particles would increase. We tested this theory by using different sized openings for the light to shine through. Our control brightness was with a 20 mm diameter hole, and then we decreased this to a 10 mm diameter hole to reduce the intensity of light by 4 times. The kinetic energy is the same either way. However the rate at which they are ejected, from the perspective of the metal, is smaller. From the wave model, the maximum kinetic energy is dependent on light intensity. From the particle model, it isn't. Light of different frequencies is seen as different colors of the spectrum. From the model that light is an electromagnetic wave, we would expect that the color would affect the maximum kinetic energy with a linear relationship. But not just any colored light could theoretically eject electrons if it was not a high enough amplitude. However, if we imagine this from the particle model, any frequency of light would be able to eject electrons, with a relationship determined by the equation Ek equals Planck's constant times frequency plus a phase shift determined by the metal. We tested this out with five different colors of five different frequencies and wavelengths. Here were our results. As you can see, a linear relationship was formed. The trend line that we have here has a gradient of 5 times 10 to the power of negative 34. This should be equal to Planck's constant if our experiment was correct, and our data did end up being very close to Planck's constant, approximately 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 34. Our uncertainty for the data was 7.76 .7 times 10 to the negative 35. This is consistent with the particle model. Another aspect of the photoelectric effect is delay. In a particle model, we do not expect any delay as all particles are moving at the speed of light. This is very fast. In this experiment light acted like particles. But what does this mean? Light cannot be a stream of classical particles because it displays interference, and cannot be a classical wave because of our results from the photoelectric experiment. 
We often refer to light as a quantized electromagnetic wave. Quantization is where values are discrete and step-like. Light is thought to have discrete energy values, acting like a wave when it is in motion and like a particle as soon as it interacts with something. Usually we do not notice this quantization of light, this is just because the quanta are so small that we cannot detect them and we are not at affected by them. Electron guns are made up of an anode, a cathode, and a heater at their core. The heater heats up the cathode, and therefore injects energy into the cathode. This causes the electrons to become excited, and they are released. This behavior is particle-like. The electrons in our experiment have mass, unlike the photons that we examined before. The electrons go through a small opening through a vacuum until they collide with a fluorescent screen. This creates a bright spot. Electron guns provide the basis for which old-fashioned televisions work. Electrons cannot be a stream of classical particles because they display interference as shown in our experiment. But electrons cannot be a classical wave because you can fire singular electrons one at a time with an electron gun. Every object can behave either as a wave or as a particle, depending on its state of motion. Anything that is a wave can also therefore have a wavelength. Keep in mind though, these wavelengths are tiny compared to the size of visible and tangible objects. So how do we find the wavelength of an object? The Broglie's wavelength is the wavelength associated with a massive particle. This is linked to the momentum of an object along with Planck's constant. The wavelength of a 0.001 kg p traveling at 1000 meters per second is equal to de Broglie's wavelength because its momentum is 1 kg per meter squared. This is the same as that of an electron. 